Hello, I'm Azaya. Welcome back to Venus by Frontier. I just came back from the gym, and uh, yeah, nothing really much to say. I am not hungry, since I put in avocado on my oatmeals lately, and it's been really good at uh, making me satiated. Like, my friend actually uh, did not know what that word was, which was pretty... Surprising to me since uh, I guess most people that aren't really into fitness or diet wouldn't know the word But it's like uh, the the feeling of being satisfied, right? It's like the the noun form of it. I think Is that is that the noun form or is it like actually the verb form? I think it might be the verb form I don't know. It's either of those <laughs> But yeah, avocado has been very good at uh, making me able to, yeah, just uh, be satisfied with the foods that I'm eating. You don't really eat too much avocado because they are very high in calories, but um, the amount of fat that's in avocado is actually very filling for not that much that you're actually eating, right? But yeah. Doing pretty good at the gym, doing pretty good on my sleep time. You guys know the drill. My life is pretty boring. <laughs> so let's just jump into the last episode recap, shall we? I probably load, of course. So on the last episode, we progressed through folk quite steadily. We triggered the event where we found out that Freya was using her divine gear to charm people even though I felt like Loki should have known that during our first encounter with her. But I guess they wanted that to be, you know, a milestone that you do after you progress through the story. So after you did that, all of Ymir's territories instantly become Freya's territories. Other than that, we progress through some more stories with Regret and Evil Turka. Nothing really much to say about those scenes. We did get two H scenes too, one involving Evil Turka and one involving Regret. What I feel like uh, the game should have done is just give those scenes, like instead of giving me the ability to do this stuff, I wish they would just give me options to like, you know, to make them evil or not, right? Instead of just giving me the option to train or mingle. Because it makes me feel like the events are not that... What's the word I'm looking for? It doesn't feel chronologically correct, right? Sometimes when you see Turka being all meek and stuff, and the, even though she's supposed to be evil, that feels quite awkward. And then you'd see Regret doing... You know, some... Or not doing something, but you'd see a regret in Loki's events where she's like nonchalantly not being scared of Loki after what happened on the training H scene. I'm like, what the hell? Y you okay, regret? <laughs> You're not on some drugs, are you? Did you forget what happened like five minutes ago? But yeah, other than those, nothing really much happened. The brunt of the story is going to be after we conquered the game, or conquered the territory or the chapter that we're on. As we've already seen from previous uh, episodes. It is very nice though that we can progressively, like, you know, it, it's not like we're stuck very hard on the game. I really do think that it was such a good thing that I reloaded the game from scratch and got some better people instead of some of the useless people that I did. Like, the Gus Serpent was way useless before, right? Even though I had him. I actually believe that the Magma Serpent I have right now is way better than the Gus Serpent. And I got this guy from a Key of Destiny, so it was RNG Gacha. The Mew was also better than the Gus Serpent. I don't think I'm really lacking in terms of defensive capabilities. I really just want some more attacking people. Ah, sad to say H, but you are way too expensive for what you do. 
The Moo technically is also pretty darn expensive, but he actually does do damage. For some reason, when I use H, he just does not do damage. Arsene hasn't gotten into combat just yet, but he should be doing very good, especially with all those critical boosts that I have on him. So the next units that I want to make are the Cerberus and the Oni Girl, which are not happy just yet. I need a hero medallion, which I will make, of course. Resources are not really an issue anymore, so we are doing very good on that front. I feel like food and magic are not really too much of an issue right now, too. And, well, money. Money is not an issue, like, at all. Actually, pretty insane on the money front. Let's see. I'm gonna let Jason heal up. I think this team should be fine. I'm gonna need the second team because I want to assault... Huh, do I want to, ass to assault them right now? Nah, I think we're good. I think I'm gonna go get this area, the Halden Plains campsite. That one is pretty easy. And the next turn, we're gonna try to destroy the capital. Or one of them, anyway. Since it's gonna be... Nighttime. Okay, let's do this. Not gonna do the eight scene events just yet. But we will do that soon. Don't want to start at an H scene, you know? Let's see. This team should be fine. I'm going to use Loki because I want to level him up. He's kind of not as high leveled as I want him to be. Wow. Got lucky, this bastard. Parry is actually pretty strong. Whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? You got destroyed! That self-destruct destroyed a tiny bit of my HP, though. And look at that dots! 265. But yeah, you're probably gonna need to heal up the mill. Okay, we got that area, so nothing too difficult there. Let's see, who's gonna replace the move for a bit? I guess the Hanya Samurai. I can also use Turka. Turka is actually pretty expensive right now. I don't think she used to be this expensive. 253 food. Look at Black Ball Bouncer, dude. He only needs 68 for how much damage he is using. This guy is like insane. He is like the super efficient, like, uh, unit, like for sure. Like, are you kidding me? Only 68 for the amount of damage that he does? DD Shack too. Jesus Christ. I don't know what happened to these guys, but they are, like, my best units ever. And I made them super early, too, in the game. Okay, Mikey B, 169. Yeah, I feel like I'm making Mikey B not as, as a good as a unit again. <laughs> God damn it. I should also try to look at the growth thing too. I assume growth means if it's S rank, you gain levels a lot faster than if you are like growth A or C. That's usually the case with these sort of games. But yeah, I'm not leveling up these guys anymore though. They are just too weak. Mercurius, growth A. Let me compare Mercurius to, like, Spartan. I know it's unfair because he is 15 levels higher. And I guess I gave him a lot of hardy physique. Jesus Christ. Three hardy physiques on the right side. Yeah, maybe I should have given you hardy physique too, Mercurius. Hmm... Okay, enough looking at this, though. Let's actually try to attack... Uh, Freya's attack... Freya's team. This shouldn't be too difficult. This is really gonna be the difficult one. Man, if I can just destroy one of them early, I should be able to do something with this team. I think I also need to ambush them, for sure. Like, not ambushing them is going to be... 
making it remarkably difficult. Fuck these guys. Like, group heal, dude. Like, fucking hell. 12, 10, 22. 32. 40. 48. And this guy got self-heal. Jesus Christ. So yeah, if I want to offset that with dots, I need like 50% plus. Which is almost impossible, I think. Unless I don't want to do any damage whatsoever with my front line. That's fine. Wow, you're... you're... <laughs> oh my god, you're useless. That's gonna reduce everyone's defenses. Good job, Loki. As long as we kill these one of these guys early... Oh shit! Okay, that's good. Oh my god. Black Ball Bouncer, you're dead. That's not good. You are like my main attacker. Now I can only hope that... Hanya... Samurai is gonna do something. Loki's doing good damage though. I think we're good. Yeah, I should probably use Spartan here. Okay, still not bad. Still not bad. I'm gonna have to switch out Black Ball Bouncer. Okay, Freya is attacking, so I'm for sure gonna have to defend with my team. Didi Shack, we need to get you back on the team. Regret. Spartan, you're healed up. You're gonna switch out with Regret. Regret is not as good as Spartan. I don't know why. I think Spartan actually blocks for people a lot more. Why that is, I actually don't know. Both of them have forward guard, so it can't be that. Yeah, I actually don't know what causes him to block more. Yeah, this team should be fine. Everyone else is gonna heal up. And the next turn is gonna be nighttime. I don't think I'm gonna be able to defeat this one, the capital fight, like instantly, so... We're gonna need to heal up for a tiny bit. How many assets do we got? They got eight assets. So we're gonna have to lower that, like, pretty quickly. Yeah, this should be way... F this should be fine. The Sentinel is pretty weak, because he's only a tier 1. And they only got one defender. Okay, no one got ambushed, which is good. Good job, Turka. Damn, Loki. Pretty good, Loki. There it goes, DD Shack going ham. Yeah, these guys are not doing damage at all. Yeah, fuck off. I wonder why Freya didn't attack there. That's interesting. Did I have n range null or something? Was that what happened? Freya didn't attack for the first turn, which was interesting to me. Added attack, ambush alert. No, I don't have it. I wonder why that didn't happen. Or maybe Freya was too slow? Can't be, she's pretty fast. Yeah, can't be, right? I don't know what happened. Maybe she actually did die before she could attack. Okay, let's see. I think I'm gonna reclaim this territory. Navarnamo. The Marvik or Narvik? I think I could get Narvik in one turn. It is nighttime though, but do I have. Is my second team ready right now? Not really. They still need to heal up. Yeah, I'm gonna go get this area. Shouldn't really be too much of an issue. They got one defender and like healers, but. I'm gonna go kill that defender very easily. Okay, no ambush. Yeah, look at that. Destruction. Though self-destruct is pretty annoying. 
There we go. Yeah, DD Shack, my boy. They are out healing the damage that we do with the dots, but yeah, we do way too much damage for them to be able to keep up. My team has issue if the defender like uh, blocks way too much. So people like uh, the Holy Knight here, this guy's defense is 154. He resists ailments too. Like these guys are nuts. And I'm guessing Slayer defense means that my Slayer's like uh, multiplication damage is not able to pierce that. Wow, these guys are actually stupid. Okay, I think we're gonna do one scene before we progress through anything. Beast intercourse? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I said that I was gonna do two eight scenes per episode, and I think I'm gonna stick to that. But fucking Turka, man. Jeez. Body swapping is probably also gonna be an H scene. We're gonna do... Yeah, we're gonna do Regret and Fino. Turka has so many H scenes already. Like, I think on Patreon, she she got like eight H scenes. Well, Regret has three, and Fina has three too. Jesus Christ. Let me take a look at Fina real quick and see if this is gonna be an H scene. <laughs> If this is gonna be an 8 scene, this is gonna be a pretty interesting one because I'm probably gonna have to voice act Loki while he's being in Fina's body, maybe? Fina entered Loki's quarters, saw the man waiting for her and went silent. He was her master, that was true. But at the same time, the man Fina had always served was a far cry from this person. Ah, oh, okay. I thought it was gonna be Loki body swapping with Fina, but I guess it's gonna be Vedrung. Yo, I've been waiting, Fina. Vedrung was lying in the bed and resting his head on his hands. He grinned and greeted Fina. Vedrung rarely showed himself. He consumed such immense dark energy that, except in emergencies, he was supposed to stay inside Loki. And yet he was here, meaning... Fina found that her voice was stiff. Come on, don't be cold. We're about to have some sexy fun. Just so you know, Loki says it's fine. Fina tried to put up a defense, but Ved preempted her. That blasted Loki summoned me to deal with some wimps. Now I'm left unsatisfied. I've got a lot of frustration to let out. So you see, I was thinking I'd let it out on you. I don't think we've actually seen Vedrung in gameplay, which is kind of weird. I wish Loki was able to, you know, change into Vedrung during some key fights. I mean, he's not weak by any means. I just wish he was stronger, you know? Vedrung was referring to that afternoon's battle. To swiftly clear out the enemy, Loki triggered the key's power. But Vedrung didn't find his opponent to be satisfactory. Essentially, he wanted Fina to burn off his remaining energy and play the role of a scapegoat. Fina sighed but accepted. If not even Loki could deny Vedrung his desires, Fina had no chance. Glad you know how things work. <laughs> nice. Come on over, Fina. Fina answered the vet's invitation and began to walk over to him. Well, that was... Yeah, this game is always fast when it comes to the change in CG, dude. Sorry, YouTube. Patreon.com says I kiss, okay? After that, Fina had a dream. Unable to move in the dream, Loki violently raped her. But was it real or just a dream? When Fina woke up, she couldn't decide. From the bed sheets, nobody could tell she even had sex with Vedrung, as they had been replaced with new ones. I feel like that actually was not that bad, you know? I feel like the eight scenes, uh, so far, with, um, Fina, 
They're pretty... Well, they're not exactly vanilla, but they're not as intense as, you know, the training sessions that we do for Rig Red. And I guess uh, Turka. In Turka's case, I do feel like it's also not that bad, personally speaking, right? I did say in Turka's case, most of the time we're just not doing anything and just watching her do stuff on herself. While in Regret's case, we actually do stuff with her, right? But <laughs> looking at the naming of the scene, Beast Intercourse, I, I have a feeling it's gonna be something like the Stallion thing again. <laughs> oh dear lord. Okay. Let's take a look at what we want to do here real quick. We can still use these guys, no problem. Let me see. Which area do I want to take? I'm gonna retake uh, this territory. 40 gold, 20 resources. This doesn't really give too much, but... It's only one unit, so... We can easily defeat these guys. Okay, they ambushed us, but it should be fine. Yeah, look at that. The nice thing about Turka, I guess, is that she's very fast. She does decent damage. Not as much as Didi Shack, but she is very fast. Yeah, look at that. Well, I say she doesn't do damage, but she does deal damage quite a bit. Okay, it's nighttime now. I'm gonna try to take Nardic not at night. Since these guys actually have. Um. I'm guessing that at nighttime, the people that use magic, so like demons, etc., are probably gonna be at their best during that time. So I'm assuming they actually get a boost, boost during it. Okay, I think Loki would want to go down here. Maybe it's a good time for me to start training Arsenir. The Manticore is still not gonna do anything. I think I'm gonna go heal up Black Ball Bouncer. And then we're gonna try to take two territories right now. The Dulahan. Yeah, these guys are gonna go on the offense. Mercurius. I should probably try to train Mercurius. But it does feel like I need attackers more than defenders. So far, I'm having really good defenders already. Like, Spartan is good, Dulahan is good, Fina is good. And I have Regret too. Which I haven't been using too much. She's alright, but I still feel like Spartan is way better. Pierce attack, flank attack. Hmm. Nekomata, lethal attack. Yeah, I also still have Machma Serpent too. I forgot about him. Range attack, added attack, critical boost. This guy's decent too. The Devil Cook. I'm just putting like a... A, a team here on the... Trying to make actual good units instead of like jobbers on the fourth team. Yeah, I feel like each team only needs one defenders to be completely honest or defender. Growth A, 4000 XP. Wow, you need significantly more XP after level... Like 17. Magma Serpent almost has double the XP, but only at level 21. I wonder even if, even though if their growth are the same, depending on what type of unit they are, it's going to be a bit different. Like the amount of the XP you need. I can't really know for sure. Okay, let's go take this territory. Force up, magic up. Gold 20, Cure 5. This is much better. Let's see, which one is stronger? This guy is strong. Yeah, these guys only have one defender, no healers. I should be able to destroy those guys both. As long as I can beat the guy with the... 
with the Holy Knight with my current team. Arsene, I'm having good hopes for you. We're trying to train you here. Ooh, you're being attacked like first though. That's an oh shit! Freya is here? I wasn't even like paying attention, shit. Okay, that's kind of annoying. Good job on the parry though. Damn, that parry is pretty insa insane. Ah, fucking Didi Shack. Didi Shack is not very good when fighting with like Freya. She, he never gets to attack like at all. Shit, and that guy's not dead. I might have to reload this. Diddy Shock is dead, isn't he? Yep. Yeah, this is not good. We only have two turns left. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, we're gonna have to reload this. Not good at all. I might want to have Garm, I guess. That's not a win? The fuck? That's so bad. Wow, look at that team. That team actually destroyed them. Yeah, sadly this team was not able to destroy them like fully. I'm gonna have to reload there. Instead of using... DD Shack, I'm gonna use Black Ball Bouncer. It's okay for me to use um, Arsene and Spartan, I guess. But yeah, I'm guessing we're gonna need these guys. Or maybe Arsene is actually not doing too much there. Maybe I kind of want to do that instead. And hope that Loki doesn't get attacked first. Or attack, attack by Freya anyway. Depends on our targeting, I guess. Okay, let's see how this goes. Yeah, I actually did not see that Freya was here. That was my mistake. So, DD Shack, you get countered very hard by Freya. Okay, Turka is the one that's getting hit. Okay, that's a heal, which is fine, and also a defense up. Okay, so far so good. They're not doing too much damage to us. And we should be out healing the damage that they did. Okay, the Holy Knight is dead. Okay, I think we're good. Yep. As long as the Holy Knight is dead, these guys are donezo. The defenders really are, like, the guys that can actually, like, block the damage. Freya is actually pretty pitiful. Wow, these guys are pretty strong. Yeah, as long as Didi Shack is not blocked, or if he's not charmed, he's able to destroy those guys easily. Okay, let me see. I don't have... This area is gonna be attacked. Oh, I, I, I'm not paying attention to the units that I've been wanting to make. God damn it. Yeah, I think I missed the chance to make them. I need to be paying attention to those. Also, let's take a look at the items here real quick. We haven't been using items for a while. He has this, the Cardinal's Hat, Group Heal and Boost Human. Slay Flying and Range Attack. He already has Range Attack. Ambush Alert, Treasure Hunt. I don't know what Treasure Hunt does. You don't have a vest, so I'm gonna go give you some. Dark Blast, cure, Curse Cure. I'd rather actually you attack more because you already have a heal. The equitable heal is already 10%. So that's pretty good. I have this shield on her. She also needs a two hand. Critical boost? I don't think you really need critical boost. Loki wants armor. He has this one. Hardy physique and self heal. Sap demon. Not really that useful. She has this one. Ambush alert. Spell barrier. Sap demon. Probably better than what she has right now. 
And then a one-handed. She's using this. Helmet split wall breaker. You're also using that. And then you can use a shield. Spell barrier, curse cure, evade and hardy physique. Parry and debuff cure. Hmm. I don't want you getting... I don't want you losing your speed, so I'm gonna give you that. Diddy Shack, armor... He has this. Forward physique, or forward guard and hardy physique. I don't know if I want forward guard on him. I think that's actually what's been making Diddy Shack take damage. When he shouldn't, shouldn't be. When he's been, you know, like... When he should be not... Not getting hit. Instead, that Spartan should be getting hit. I think that's actually fucking him up. He's not that tanky. I have him with this. Lethal boost and lethal critical. Or sorry, critical boost and lethal critical. This is actually an insane sword. Is Unbato? Helmet split lethal critical 50. Damn. The guillotine axe. If I have someone with insane critical boost and I give him this, that guy would go to town. Okay, Mercurius, I haven't given you anything, so... You don't attack Mercurius, you're defense only, so this doesn't really work for you. I will give you defense, though. That should be pretty good. Beast accessory, I only have one, so... There you go. As for claws... Counter Amp, Hardy Physique. You're a defender, so this is actually way better for you. The Devil Cook, Seer, Shaman Elf. Let's take a look at this. I have you with Poison Cure and Group Heal. Range Attack, Critical Boost. Group Heal, Defense Only. Poison Cure. This gives me 2% more HP regen. So sure, why not? And then she wants a vest. She's currently using this, which is a spell wall, group heal, spell barrier. This is way better. She's one of my frontliners, so I should be using her quite a lot. Or equipping her with, you know, something that's better. Let's see. Garm is using the crossbow. Slay flying, sap flying. He already slays flying, so he doesn't need the wing killer. Slay Demon and Undead. That's probably better for him. Right? 12 attack minus 3 speed. Yeah, that's okay. That should be good. I have this on you. Slay Beast, Lethal Critical. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want Lethal Critical. Let's see. Who else? The Moo. Slay Demon, Slay Undead. You already have that. You don't have any more beast accessory. Wall breaker, hardy physique. Jason, let's take a look at what you got. You're using this. Range attack and critical boost. That's alright, I guess. No more beast accessory. Do I have better whips for you? You're using this. Lethal critical and speed debuff. Sp Lethal critical is pretty good for you. Critical boost. This is good for someone that has lethal critical. Hmm. I don't think it's good for you, though. Let's see. Arsene got five levels from the last fight. Sure, I'll give you this. Helmet split is good on you for sure. Forward guard, hardy physique. No, I'm not going to use forward guard and anyone, I think. Except if it's like the barbarian, not the barbarian, the gladiator, because he got parry. Well, this guy also got parry, but it's only 40%. I think the barbarian or gladiator has it for 50%. Mikey B, what are you using for armor? You're actually using pretty decent armor. Hardy physique. Oh, sorry, forward guard. No, you don't want that. Yeah, I think we're good for now. I think we are outfitted very good. Hmm. 
since I think I can actually destroy these guys in one shot, I'm gonna try to destroy one of these guys and then have some of these guys defend. I think my defense team could destroy the attacking team for sure. But let me take a look at which one I want to beat up. These guys are pretty weak. Well, this doesn't seem weak. The Black Knight. Damn. Living statue. Yeah, this one is also pretty weak, I think. I think I'm gonna try to destroy this one and then potentially try to get that area in two turns. Or in one turn after that. Or I could also get this one. Let's do this. So these two are defending, which is good. I think we are good to go, right? Where's Arsene? I thought I put Arsene into my team. That's weird. Oh, Arsene's on the second team. Yeah, I should be able to defend that though. We got Didi Shack. Wow, we're not doing damage to these guys. That's a crit? Oh no. Okay, thank you. Good job, Loki. Wow. Don't don't kill Black Ball Bouncer, please. The Oni Girl. Oh, I did not check whether or not the Oni Girl was gonna be able to be a good unit or not on this turn. God damn it. I really should be paying attention to that. Okay, we're destroying these guys. Only the ogre thing is actually tanking that much damage. But our dots is doing good work. And now he's only able to like defend while we heal ourselves. Awesome. Yeah, our second team should be destroying these guys. So Arsene died, which was expected. She is pretty low leveled. So I can try to get these territories, but since it's nighttime, I'm not going to go take it. I'm going to take Elvarium instead. Arsene got three levels from that fight, so pretty good. Who should I put there? I need to actually train some people. Hmm. Yo, we need to actually train some people. You know what, Arsene? You're gonna be trained, okay? You're gonna be put there. And then we're gonna try to destroy those guys. How many turns have it, has it been since I started this map, by the way? What's the assets? Seven assets, five territory. As I said, I also need to pay attention to this. Yeah, I think other than those two, I don't really want to make anyone else. The Basilisk. White attack, lethal critical 60. Damn, this is a very good one. Dragon scales, ambush tactic, poison field, hardy physique. Damn, this dragon is insane. I kind of want to make him. But uh, making too much dragons is going to destroy my uh, my resources. Uh, my magic, I mean. I should be able to easily destroy these guys. Yeah, I'll destroy the guy with the... Uh, the Holy Knight. Okay. Should be good. We got Loki and Black Ball Bouncer and Turka. This theme is pretty stacked. They ambushed us, but that's A-OK -okay to me. Arsene is gonna be the target, but she does have parry. There we go. Oh, come on. Nice, nice. She's doing damage even though she is pretty low leveled. So that by itself is all already pretty good. Wow, that dots. I'm, I'm guessing she got poisoned. Damn. Yeah, she got poisoned for sure. Don't worry, Arsene. We are power, -ling level power leveling you up. Way to go. Killing yourself, assassin. Alright, second team should be destroying these guys. Awesome.
Okay. Let's save. Ymir's powerful soldiers took some time to deal with, but they finally managed to invade Folk's most important base. And as Loki predicted, that base became the site of the most violent battle yet. Loki tried to distract the enemy by dividing his army into small groups and having them run about. But Freya's main force was to cut above the squads they had fought thus far. Ever vigilant, they rigorously fought back against Loki's army. Don't stop! Keep moving! Don't give them any targets! But under Loki's command, the ever-moving squads gradually whittled away at Freya's forces. If we conquer this base, Freya's country will be completely in the palm of my hand. It was a rough battle, but at this rate, they could win. But such a thought would be too naive for Loki. Here she is. A moment later, tons of arrows suddenly rained down from the sky and showered Loki's squad. They looked identical to the one Garm brought back from recon duty. The one that controlled any man it, it pierced. The sacred and enchanting arrow. Couldn't wait any longer to join in, could you Freya? Loki used his spear to knock the arrows away as his eyes stared at the far end of the enemy army. For her to so accurately fire at Loki's location, she must have viewed the battlefield from above. And the only place from which to do that was the giant windmill towering far beyond Folk's army. Loki's hypothesis was proven correct when an arrow flew straight at him. It traveled distinctly faster than those of the other archers. And if it had hit, a fatal wound would probably be un unavoidable. But it wasn't a good enough shot to work on Loki. If it could narrow down the line of fire and spot the arrow as it approached, he sen his senses could quickly re react to the projectiles. Typo there. Meanwhile, an enchanting arrow struck one of Loki's troops. He wildly flailed his sword around and went to stand with folks' sol soldiers. The leader of one squad marveled at the monster soldier. He ordered the manipulated monsters to exterminate, exterminate them, but... The several monster soldiers he thought were being controlled turned against the humans and killed a number of them with their surprise attack before returning to Loki's squad. Well done. Now retreat and calm your minds. The effects may be suppressed. But the enchanting arrows are still likely doing something. Messenger squad, send a message to the whole army. Everyone enable your anti-charm protection. Ruin Freya's dastardly plot and rout the enemy. Their trump card, the enchanting arrows, didn't work. That fact dropped the morale of Freya's army and raised that of Loki sufficiently enough. Controlling the enemy is certainly highly effective, but relying on that strategy will be our undoing. Regardless of the method, you're inviting the enemy into your army in the end. If they had a means to charm their foes, then instead of recruiting them, simply stopping the enemy in their tracks and finishing them off would be wise. It should be viewed not as a means to strengthen the army, but a way to halt enemy soldiers. Send Turka's cavalry squad forward. Also, Freya is most likely observing the battlefield from that windmill. Send some soldiers to capture her. When Loki gave the orders, his troops acted with precision. Although they had fewer soldiers, the opposing army's morale was down, and their mobility was relatively limited. Victory was within reach. All that remained was to find Freya in the windmill and take her prisoner. But Loki wasn't convinced. No fight could so easily be won, especially against a goddess. No doubt she had a trick up her sleeve. She already made excessive use of the enchanting arrows. Was that all she had? Was it really that simple? Was there some other plan? Why didn't she try to snipe him again? Could she not? Loki's intuition searched through various possibilities, wary and restless. I see. Then, Loki hit upon an idea, released his dark energy upon the surrounding area to search for foes, and... There! Loki won handily. He noticed a blade swing down at him from behind and stabbed the seemingly empty space with a spear. I guess it's the assassins. Now they're seriously trying to kill me, are they? Typical assassins, I swear. It felt like he pierced through some organs. Along with the unmistakable sensation of murder came the appearance of a dead, blade-wielding man who looked like he had been about to kill Loki. He wore a white cloak.
They recalled the incident upon their initial invasion. Right after Freya appeared, they were surrounded by cloaked men. Just how did those soldiers escape their sight? The answer materialized before their eyes, disrupting our perception, concealing their presence, and using advanced camouflage. These abilities could be given to so many troops by only one person. The Harvest Moon Deity Freya. Oh, I thought it was actually just a skill that the assassins have. I guess she can camouflage people then, from afar. She didn't show up on the battlefield because she didn't have to. This goddess hid away while she cornered the enemy. It's just one scheme after another. Not only that, but she watches it all from on high. What a sickeningly arrogant woman. Loki cursed her wiles under his breath. Loki's troops faced the invisible assassins with absolute terror. Typo? Calm down. Just because you can't see them doesn't mean they're completely undetectable. Huddle together and watch out for surprise attacks. Loki's shout brought the soldiers back to their senses. He realized that, while the cloaked men couldn't be seen, they couldn't completely hide the fact that someone was there. If these troops themselves weren't significantly above average, then they could be dealt with. And if this surprise attack by the assassins was Freya's final plan, Loki had this battle in the bag, he thought. How naive you are. Loki didn't know if the wind brought the goddess's mocking scoff, or if he was hearing things. Drat! Loki realized his own foolishness and couldn't help but click his tongue. Assuming the assassin's invisibility was Freya's doing, she could presumably do the same to more than just soldiers. And what if that included arrows? <laughs> Seemingly reaching the same conclusion as Loki, Fina ran over, stood between him and the windmill behind Freya's arm, and opened her umbrella. A moment later, there was a deafening boom like a giant boulder being catapulted into, into the side of a castle. Smoke blinded everyone for some time, but once it cleared up, Fina appeared. It was a gruesome sight. The blast left Vanaheim looking like bugs had chewed holes in the top. And since the impact blew past the umbrella, it of course reached Fina's body as well. The side of her stomach was missing a big chunk. I actually wish they... Uh, change the CG, or not the CG, the sprite into her having a hole in her stomach. I really wish more uh, games would do that, actually. Like, it's not because I like gore or anything, but I just feel like it's, you know, very brave of the game of doing so, right? Fina! Fina had one of the greatest defensive abilities in the demon realm, and yet she couldn't block the supremely powerful shot. Her use of the enchanting arrows made me assume she, ta she had little direct firepower, but that was a massive mistake. Her role is in a supportive one. It's sniping her foes to death in one blow. The first barrage was a, was a trick. She let it be blocked on purpose to give the, the impression she was nothing to fear. Yes, the enchanting arrows and the assassins were all a setup. It was all meant to buy time until the invisible arrow could be fired. Her focus was not on support, but on sniping. The support was meant to enable full use of her sniping, nothing more. As if it was planned, reinforcements came at the worst possible time. The arrow wounded Fina, the camouflage assassins distracted the soldiers, and morale had dropped. If the fight went on like this, failure was inev inevitable. Retreat! Back to the drawing board! Loki bitterly made his decision and ordered a retreat from the battlefield dominated by Freya. I lost not in numbers, but in strategy. This loss is my fault. As Loki left, he gritted his teeth and felt his own powerlessness ignite burning rage in his heart. After she sniped them from the windmill, Freya descended to the plains and watched them through pure and selfless eyes. As if she held her breath throughout most of the sniping effort, Freya inhaled all the oxygen she had missed, filling her lungs and swelling her chest. Tons of sweat poured from her forehead, caking her messy but lustrous hair to her skin. Her overflowing divine energy had been completely dispersed, and it was easy to see how drained she was. For her last attack on Loki, she had used the time between her first and second volleys to pack all her divine energy into the arrow. 
Loki's retreat meant this battle had ended with Freya's victory, but she had hoped to take Loki's life. She by no means underestimated Loki. Letting him survive to strike back wasn't part of the plan. But even so, Freya was confident in her chances. Saddled with feelings for her dead husband and a faith in her people, she could not lose. Deeply ingrained in her soul was her conviction to keep the demon set of folk. And so she always fought on the defensive. That was when her power could best be used. Well, you're not wrong. Your fucking defense is actually insane for you. But I can probably RNG myself to victory if, you know, like I'm able to crit your, your stupid guards. Loki returned to the airship and immediately brought Fina to his room to be treated by a few sorcerers. Fina's side had been completely gouged by Freya's arrow. Even an amateur could see it was a fairly grave injury. How does it look? Can it be healed? Very well. You take care of the rest. Loki got out of the way of his troops' healings, healing efforts by leaving the room to wait until they, fin they finished. Losing a subordinate to his own misstep weighed heavy on Loki's conscience. That pain and anguish, as someone who personally led a squad, was something he knew all too well. He knew he was giving Fina special treatment, but... But do I not want to lose Fina? As Loki was resting against the wall and brooding, Ymir frantically ran over. Ymir, you're back. Why would this guy care? I was gonna say, Ymir was actually pretty useless in this whole chapter. But what is he doing here? Is he gonna use like a magic drug or something? Ymir started by eyeing the wounded mate to make a diagnosis. Then he put on some sterile gloves for a physical examination of the affected area. At Ymir's orders, the sorcerers tending to Fina conjured a barrier around him. Ymir gave orders to the assistant, then materialized blazing dark energy from his palm. You know, I'm actually thinking whether or not uh, Yorm would have left our team if I had mingled with her a lot faster. Hmm. Maybe she actually wouldn't have left our team if we got an H scene with her before we finished off Regret. That made me think. <laughs> He held his hand up to the circular wound and began to sear the whole gash with dense with the dense flames. Her face pale, Fina scratched at the bed. Normally one to keep a cool face at all times, the fact that she wildly shook her head to endure the pain meant it must have been quite agonizing. Ymir familiarly treated Fina. Close to an hour later, he finally finished, and Fina's breathing gradually calmed. Good work, Ymir. Thank you. Yeah, 
これくらい大したことじゃないよ可愛い弟の部下の危機だ私程度の力だったらいつでも貸してあげるさ I still don't trust this guy No Fina owes your life If I can do anything for you Just tell me <laughs> そこまでかしこまられると逆に困ってしまうな兄弟なんだから気にしないでほしい The grin never left Ymir's face. It was hard to believe a demon would say such a thing. Demons generally only acted in their own self interest. For one to be so charitable, it could only mean they had something to gain. Thank you so much, Ymir. But do you mind if I ask something? Well, I'm wondering how you knew that Fina was injured. Remember what you said when you got here? You'd heard that Fina was hurt. I ordered my troops to tell no outsiders about this. Spreading knowledge of our internal affairs isn't a good plan, I feel. And yet, somehow, you heard about this. So I'm curious as to your source. <laughs> yeah, this guy is working together with.、Uh... Freya. I'm still thinking that for sure. Loki's. I did not actually think that Loki would think that far, considering、uh, he was being emotional when Fina was、uh, hurt there. But、uh, yeah, that was pretty good logical thinking there. Ah, I see. I suspected that someone was leaking you information. I'm sorry I doubted you. Yeah, yeah. Fina got his new juice all turned up. Ymir and Loki felt like a thin string tying them together was stretched to the limit. The mood was so tense. They tried to predict each other's thoughts and get a look into their psyche. Loki and Ymir both smiled, but in truth, they searched each other's words for the slightest hint of their true intentions. At any rate, I really am thankful that you saved Fina. Forgive my rudeness. Yeah, yeah. You didn't say that. それよりも、私は一度魔界に戻って、全力を整えようと思っているんだが、ロキはどうするんだい ?I'll stay here and try to beat Freya. あの女神はとんでもないレギツネだ。うざくで戦うことはお勧めしないが、君がそう言うなら、無理に止めない。むしろ、私の方からいくつかお気に入りをしておこう。女神に集まる信仰心を、少しでも削れるように。週末を信奉する共振者を払っておく。学ラン程度には役立つだろう。Yeah, I'm guessing he was actually working together with Freya, and then right now he's probably betraying Freya since Loki is winning. Is what I'm assuming is going going on. How thoughtful. Thank you. それと、私の部下はそのまま君の元に置いておくよ。まあ、君が必要ないというのであれば引き取らせてもらうが。I could use all the soldiers I can get. I'll happily make use of them. Don't worry. I'll be sure to make them into, you know, like、uh, sacrificial pawns. Ymir left through the hallway. <laughs> For being such a pushover. You handled that pretty nicely. If you thanked that nice guy too many more times, I would have socked you good. Any way you look at it, the fact that he came back at this particular time is overly convenient. I have to assume he saved Fina's life just so I'm indebted to him. Oh? So you think she got hurt because of him? You're saying your mirror's in cahoots with Freya? No, not that. This is only a hypothesis, but from your mirror's perspective, It didn't matter who got hurt. It could have been Fina, Garm, or even me. Presumably, myself getting wounded would have been the, most, the best case scenario for him. If he saved my life, I'd owe him quite a lot. So basically, he wants you to owe him a favor. He wants more pawns at his disposal, I'm sure. Just so you know, in the, in the future, Ymir always expects something in return for his generosity. He puts his own profit first. Man, you cousins are a pain in the ass. Well, good luck with that. Doesn't seem like I'll have anything to do this time around. 
Why do you say that? This is just a hunch. But the key to this fight ain't gonna be raw power. It'll be all about trickery. That cheap ass shit's more your wheelhouse. I'll take that as a compliment. So is there gonna be something that triggers Freya's uh, units to be weakened? Encouraged by his other self in his mind, Loki walked to the meeting room. I'm guessing this scene actually needs to trigger for Freya's defenses to go down. Is everyone here? Aside from Fina, the major members of Loki's army gathered in the meeting room. Loki felt their eyes on him as he sat in the chair at the back of the room and calmly reported the results of the last battle. I'll start by describing what happened. This failure hit us quite hard. The damage to our army was significant. And what's worse, the morale of Freya's army has greatly increased. We don't have the stamina necessary to fully take down this country. If it came down to a battle of attrition, our failure would be assured. Does anyone have any plans in mind? Any op opinions? I was gonna say option there. The average opponent might be susceptible to that, but Freya has a special unit that can turn invisible. With all those highly trained troops, assassinating her isn't realistically feasible. Naive. Yes, that's the most realistic approach, but simply targeting their food stock isn't enough. Something that shakes spoke to its very core will be necessary to defeat Freya. So we'll attack something more fundamental, a cornerstone of folk. We'll target the windmills. Her eyes are so weird now that they're evil. <laughs> I'm suppo I'm supposing that's like their her surprise eyes, but it's so weird because they don't have any pupils. That's right. Folks' stable climate enables the use of the windmills to process weed, creating plentiful food and revenue. Specifically, we'll send stealthy squads to the windmills and stop the wind with magic traps. Without wind, they're no more than buildings. Loki wants to use them to his own benefit, you fool, Garm. That's not happening. Like I said, the windmills are the lifeblood of folk. If we destroy them all, obtaining this country becomes meaningless. Loki said curtly and made the mood in the room tenser. Garm and the other commanders froze in place. Everyone muttered their shock or admiration for a Loki in their minds. Coming from the head of an army, it was a truly inspiring statement. But after the severe loss just a short time ago, it took no small amount of arrogance. Hmm? What is it, everyone? If you have something to say, then say it. Loki nodded and continued. Folks' economy has been offset by Ymir's interference. It's currently far more unbalanced than it once was. If we can reduce their manufacturing capabilities across the country, other cities won't have the funds to send Freya reinforcements. Overwhelming their defenses and preventing reinforcements is the key to this operation. Logically speaking, yes. But acting logically isn't what humans do. Some of Freya's more highly trained followers might give the impression that they're all that way, but compared to the other countries, the people of Folk have little combat experience. Most of them come from peasant origins. Based on my investigation, there's plentiful land and a strong economy in this country, so military matters are left to Freya while the rest of the public prioritizes ec economic activity, I guess. Therefore, the soldiers aren't meant to attack, but to defend at least in the minds of the citizens. With that idea in mind, 
if harm were to come to the windmills that support their lively livelihoods, their defensive instincts should become even stronger than normal. And that brings us to another important element of this plan. Don't tamper with all of the windmills. Leave at least one in touch in each region. That way, they'll all be forced to defend the last windmill they have left, since their lives depend on it. In other words, their armies will be stuck in their cities. Loki reached the end of his long explanation and took a deep breath. Everyone seemed to understand, and nobody argued. Even a goddess would prefer the chance not to directly harm the citizens, civilians, or soldiers, even if it meant tinkering with structures. But our opponent has considerable defenses set up around the windmills. I expect Freya will be avoiding any direct combat for a while, and will be dealing with more urban warfare and diversive tactics. It will be a brutal battle, but I expect good work from everyone. I'm counting on you. They responded in the affirmatives. In the affirmative. Orders to attack the windmills were quickly sent to every squad. The entire army focused on the plan. Mobilizing troops inevitably required rations and therefore money. Without that money as a foundation, no human would fight. In the event of such a danger that nobody knows what tomorrow will bring, the top priority is to look out for oneself. Loki's latest plan focused strictly on this idea. Not all humans were willing to die for the goddess, Loki believed. Rather than directly whittle down their forces, he would shave away at the hearts of the soldiers and civilians. This is how Loki Muspelheim fought. His time spent in the, in the demon realm without any dark gear granting him this strength. So... Yeah, I'm guessing this is probably about time we destroy the capital. I'm guessing. Let's take a look though. Someone is attacking us right now. Should be a fairly simple fight that one. I don't know if that actually weakens Freya. Doesn't seem like he she got weakened. Hmm. I think we could win though. If we just attack her at night. Maybe I need double guards. Okay, almost time to be able to use Cerberus here. Or make Cerberus. I think it's also time for me to do one more H scene for you guys. So let's do that real quick. Sorry I'm late. When Loki entered the room, everyone attending the meeting was present. The civil servants rose in unison to greet Loki. This meeting was about ru rulership of Glads. So one of the participants was naturally Rigret. She looked somewhat mournful and faced Loki with helpless eyes. If it was mercy for the people of Glads that she wanted, her face wasn't compassionate enough to show it. She seemed overwrought about something. Now, let's begin. The subject of this meeting is the food situation in Glads. Uh, I think I can show this to you? I don't know if I can. <laughs> because, uh, there's something in her crotch that doesn't look like underwear. Loki ignored regret when he sat down and got to business. The civil servants described the state of things and assorted opinions were exchanged. Loki nodded at each of them and immediately asked questions when they came up, sorting out the key details of the issue. Regret never spoke throughout. She just sat with her head down. Hmm. So the war has had a significant effect. The same could be said of every country in Yggdrasil, but particularly so in Glads. Regret, tell me what you think. Regret frantically responded, drawing perplexed looks. She hid her red face and muttered about the necessity of aiding Glads. What she said was sound, but something was off about her. Around her, the civil servants asked each other what it could be in hushed whispers, but not so quiet that Loki couldn't hear. Silence. I think Regret's concerns are valid. Loki devilishly grinned. He was confident because he knew the cause of Regret's odd behavior. Rather, that she acted this way was Loki's doing. Regret. We could send him food. But do you have any concrete plans written up as to, na as to how? And what does Glads have to offer in return? You won't exactly find spare food anywhere on this continent. Hi. 
Regret Zone groans cut her off. I think I'm probably gonna censor this whole section with black bars and at least until I'm not talking about, you know, politics as much anymore. Her alluring voice made the civil servants murmur, her hips squirm in her chair, and even from Loki's position, he could tell. As long as Regret doesn't do too much moaning here. Regret's forehead was sweaty, but she forced a reassuring smile. In truth, she wanted to run away right then, but Loki wouldn't let her. By withholding food for Glads, he held her people hostage. There was no escaping this dilemma. Her look of protest was met by a cold smirk from Loki. Regret's ass had some creature attached to it per Loki's demands. Patreon.com shows Akioske. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be seeing any more talk about <laughs> politics after seeing the CG change. In the end, the meeting went how Loki hoped. The fact that she couldn't even protect Glad's laws made her feel even more like a miserable failure. So I don't actually know whether or not to call that uh scat. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome back YouTube. That does feel like it would be scat, but at the same time, I don't know, it doesn't feel that severe enough, you know? Because the CG doesn't really show that much. Uh, I'm not into that sort of thing, you know, right? I'm not into the whole scat thing and whatnot, but I do appreciate Loki being evil throughout the whole scene. And I still think people can actually still use that scene for quote-unquote research purposes. <laughs> Man, Loki is definitely a lot more evil during Regret's training than Turka's training in my opinion anyway. But yeah, I guess I'm gonna do one more um, turn before I end the episode. So Arsene got three levels here. I'm the reason why I'm gonna be ending the episode early is because if I were to get the capital right now, we are gonna get bombarded by a lengthy scene before we can get to the next chapter. So that's why I'm planning on doing it on the next episode, which will be next week. Let's see. Let me just heal up Arsene, I guess. Don't think I need to heal anyone else. And then these uh, third and second team... Oh! Ah! Oh, very... Very... What do you call it? Uh, lore... Relevant. Fina actually got reduced to 1 HP from that event. Interesting. I really like that when story ties down into gameplay too. So that was kind of nice to see. Let's see. Do we need to destroy anyone from these guys? I guess I can try to destroy this one. This is pretty tanky because they got the Dryad. And then my defending team will destroy the attacking team. I should be able to destroy the Dryad pretty easily. I think. I think I also already checked that the Oni girl was not happy. Nice! That's actually... BAM! That's good damage! Damn! Arsene already doing work, even though she's low leveled. Okay, the Dryad's only le like it's only the Dryad left. These guys are toast. Yeah, good job. Wow, you guys got fucked. Yeah, literally zero damage. Damn. Yep, these guys are toast. Oh, what the? Ah, oh, it's a regret event. Okay, we can probably end the episode after this one. Hmm? Regret. You don't visit my room often. Loki looked up from his documents and greeted Regret. He had just started getting bored with all the paperwork. Loki treated her cordially. What is it? Something urgent?
What's that? Regret presented him with a bundle of papers, somewhat to his disappointment. Annoyed that he'd have to do paperwork anyway, but knowing he shouldn't object, Loki gave them a cursory look. Are these glasses war records? Hmm. As far as I can see, this is all pretty accurate. Historical outlooks normally favored one side or the other, but Regret's records maintain a supremely neutral view. It, put Regr it puts Regret's dedication to objectivity on display. That she came to ask Loki's opinion was in the hope of achieving greater accuracy, it seemed. Regret, what do you plan to do with these records? Right, because Glad is a nation of historical preservation. Loki only cared to view the records of Ragnarok, but Glads continue to record history to the present day. For that purpose, many historians and writers assembled in Glads in the hope of telling the unbiased truth. Although, the war across Yggdrasil was signaling change in Glads. And Rigret sought Loki's opinion, because this was about a war against Glads itself, so she had to go the extra mile to stay objective. Judging from Rigret's words and the records themselves, that's one thing Loki picked up, up picked up on. Let's see. Why the fuck would I help you? This doesn't like. <laughs> this doesn't help us in any way. This literally is like, do you like regret or do you not like regret choice? This doesn't benefit me in any way. No, thank you. No. Loki shook his head. For one thing, your claims about historical truth are fishy enough as is. All views of history are biased in the end. The victor's perspective becomes the real history, and there's nothing to be done about that. There's nothing wrong with that. Just don't bother me with it. I'm not saying there is, but this truth you speak of has no value in my opinion. Yeah, he makes a very good point. Not only the writer, but the reader has their own perspective. There are always fools who view history through the lens that's most convenient for them, and there always will be. This conversation is over. Loki cut Regret off and went back to focusing on his own documents. If she were to leave records that favored Loki, that would be one thing, but that's exactly what Regret wouldn't want. Regret spent a while downheartedly staring at Loki, but... When she knew it was fruitless, she slumped her shoulders and left the room. I mean, did you guys really expect me to help her? It was to no benefit to me. <laughs> I know it's evil, but we want to be evil. Man, picking the other choice now would be leaving such a weird taste in my mouth once we go do like the good route where the goddesses don't become evil. But alright, I think this is gonna be it for me. So, we did quite a bit. We actually also got the story segment for Freya, so I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. Compared to Regress events where there was literally like one or two episodes where it was just gameplay, and then just some sex scenes without any sort of story whatsoever, I'm pretty happy with, the chap with how Chapter 3 is going. So yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Give this video a like if you guys like it. Sup if you guys haven't. Patreon will be getting these episodes early access along with everything uncensored. But yeah, if you guys are here for the uncensored like 8 scenes and stuff, do be warned. This is not like uh, vanilla shit. <laughs> it's not what I would call hardcore just yet. But it is going in that direction, you know, because uh, there was the stallion... 8 scene with uh, Turka, and then there's also the bordering like uh, scat scene with Regret just now. So far, those are the things that are more that are most uh, apparent for me. But it's not like they're triggering bad, you know, like uh, they're triggering red flags or anything for me personally. But then again, I play a shit ton of Nuki Gaze in my off time. 
<laughs> so it would take a really ridiculous H scene to blow me away. But yeah. Also, um, for people on YouTube, Patreon now has free members. So if you guys haven't checked the Patreon yet and join as a free member, do feel free to do so because they will have first episode previews of all future playthroughs. See ya!